Hey friends, how you doing? In today's video, we will add some more functionality to our uh, application. That is, we will calculate the total of all the items and also the tax applicable for it. We will also display our bill in a proper formatted way. So let's begin. Until now, we have calculated the total price of each item based on its quantity. For example, if one chocolate is bought for 10 quantities and the price of one chocolate is 10, then the total price of that item of chocolate will be 100. Now we want to calculate the total of all the items. That is, we want to have one total per instance of bill. That is adding all the items total in a single variable and for that what we will do is we will add an instance variable as we need total per instance we will add an instance variable self dot let's say total self dot total and we will initialize it to zero because we know that it is uh, a total it is a numeric value so we can have it int or float whatever we wish for so we will go for just zero as initialization and now the logic would be that after adding the item whatever is the total price of that item that total price should be added to the instance variable total that is self dot total so what we can do here is in the add item itself we will add that total price of an item to the self total for that we will do self dot total equals to self dot total equals to self dot total plus the total price of an item that is item square bracket and in double quotes total underscore price so what this will do is this will add the self dot total plus the total price and it will again store it in the instance total itself so for example if the first total as we initialize is zero and the total price is let's say 10 so what will happen is at the first iteration of adding the item the total will be zero plus 10 which is 10 and that will be saved to total and next iteration, if the total price is 20, then it will be again added to total. But in this case, the total will be 10. So 10 plus 20 will be 30. And this 30 will be again stored in the self dot total variable. That is the instance variable of total itself. Now, just one thing here. We have added total. That's fine. But the way to add it, we have uh, kind of wrote the total uh, twice there is a simple and smaller way to do it and that is if you want to add a variable into itself then what we can do is we can remove the self dot total after equals and also the plus and we can just do self dot total plus equal to the item that you want to add into the variable itself so in this case what will happen is the total variable plus item of total price will be stored in the total variable itself it, the same operation will happen but just the way of writing will be a bit short now we will just run this and we will see what happens but before that what we will do is we will just print up this uh, total variable just to see if the total that is being calculated is as expected and for that we will just print bill dot total and now we'll just run this program that is python space main dot py and we will enter a customer id let's say 1a or a1 now we will create an item it will be chocolate the price will be 10 the quantity will be let's say 1 for now and we see that the price is 10 quantity is 1 total price is 10.0 now we will again create another item in this time we will create t t a the price will be two let's say and the quantity will again be let's say one and now if we save this bill we see that the total price that is 12.0 is printed so 10 was the price of total price of first item that is chocolate and two was the total price of second item that is t and the total price which we print total of the bill entire of all the items that we printed was 10 plus 2 which is 12. so similarly if we keep on adding n number of items all the totals of those single items will be added to the instance variable total and with that will be displayed on the screen 
just one thing to note here the hash the line starting with hash so in python if you want to write comments you can write a line starting with hash and then you can write whatever you want so a hash a line starting with hash is a single line comment and this is useful if you want to uh, add documentation to bits of your code and if you want to write multi line comments that is the comment is spanning on more than one lines what you can do is you can start by three double quotes and end again with three double quotes so whatever you write in between these uh, double quotes will be considered as comments and all the comments that is even the single line comment that is starting the line starting with hash and also these multi line comments uh, the one starting with three double quotes are like they won't affect logic of your code uh, they are just for documentation purpose one more thing we have to do that is calculate the tax of your bill because each bill will have some or the other taxes and we will do the same for our bill as well and for that what we will do is we will uh, first have to declare a tax percent that we want to levy on our bill so we will create another instance variable that is self dot tax underscore percent and we will keep it as five for now we will say that we are applying five percent tax and we will create another uh, method just as we did for add item we will create a method called as calculate underscore tax so def space calculate underscore tax and in down braces as we know self and colon yep in this we will calculate the uh, percent of tax so create a variable tax uh, and equalize it to the total amount that is self dot total multiplied by in brackets that is round brackets we will have the tax percent that is self dot tax underscore percent divided by 100 uh, now we have calculated tax we have kept the calculation as simple and we will just return the value tax so we will return the variable tax and what we will do is we will run this program and we will see that tax will be calculated but it is not printed or it is not called anywhere so just for display purpose we will print the calculated tax that is we will call the bill dot calculate underscore tax inside the print so this is one thing to note that inside print you can also call any functions so that is also one thing that you can do inside your print statement. So it being a function, you will have to have uh, open and close uh, round brackets. Now we will just uh, save and run this program. So we'll just run this program again, even again, the item will create C and we'll create an item as again, chocolate. C H O C O L A T. And the price will be 10 quantity one. And we see that chocolate with one quantity and total price 10 is added now we'll create another item that is t t e a now we'll enter the price as two and we'll also add the quantity as two and we'll see that the total price of t is four now we'll save the bill and see the amount of tax that is calculated so s will give us the tax percent so it is the total of the bill is uh, total price 10 plus total price 4 which is 14 and the tax on this that is 14 multiplied by 5 divided by 100 so that comes to 0 0.70001 the thing to note here is that we have uh, added the tax percent as static so in our case how no matter how many bills we produce the tax percent will always be 5 but imagine you want to change the tax percent for a specific bills so what you can do is you can have another argument inside your init function that is we will create an argument of tax underscore percent and we will give its type as float and now what we will do is we will initialize this uh, in the initialize this argument while declaring itself so we will initialize it as five now what this does is it is a default parameter so what happens is let's let's just run this uh, thing as you know that we have to we have to pass customer id uh, while we initialize the bill so as to run this program but in this case if we don't have to pass tax percent if we just run this code uh, without making any changes it will run successfully and won't give any error so if we enter a customer id if we create a bill enter item let's say chocolate price 10 quantity 1 see uh, it runs without any errors and why it is so we haven't passed the tax percent as an argument while initializing the bill object because we have created a default 
parameter or default argument which states that if tax percent is passed while initializing an object take that as a tax percent if it is not passed then take the default value which is set that is default value is set to 5 so if you pass a tax percent let's say 10 in this case and if you run this just for simplicity just for display purpose what we'll do is we'll print the tax percent variable in the uh, save part we'll just do print of tax percent just to see what yeah yes we have to equalize that one thing that we missed so what you can do is you can just print the tax percent in save statement in the save block so print build dot tax percent and we'll just run this save and run this code Python and you can see enter a1 then C for creating an item again we'll create chocolate Price 10, quantity 1, we save. And now we'll do just save. And we see that the tax percent is 10 in this case. It is not the default 5. If you remove that argument tax percent equals to 10 and again run the same program, we can see what the tax percent is printed. Chocolate. Again, 10, 1, save. We see that the tax percent printed is 5. So this is how you can give default arguments to your class or any function the same default argument goes for any functions as well not just class you can pass default arguments to your functions and class as well and if you pass that argument the value will be taken whatever you have passed if you don't pass then the default value will be considered now we will uh, print our bill in a proper format and before doing that we need to learn about python's string formatting uh, using f strings and format method of a string so we'll first take a look at the format method that you can use with any string in python let's do one thing we'll print a message whenever an item is added successfully to the uh, bill and to do that we'll go to our add item function and we'll go to its end and let's print a statement we'll put a print statement okay and inside double quotes we'll say added item and let's put a placeholder this is how you add a placeholder for format to work and this in this placeholder will print the name uh, with price and then we'll put one more placeholder to add the price there and then quantity again a placeholder and now to fill these placeholders with uh, the values of these variables uh, you need to Go to the end of your string put a dot to the string right this double quotes dot and then say format and if you see there's a method called as format and this format takes arguments which will be replaced with the placeholders here the first value that we want to add is the name right so we'll go to format we'll say name comma and then the second is price price and then finally it's quantity and if we save this and we run python main.py let's add something we'll create an item so again chocolate we'll say price uh, 2 quantity 10 and now if you see the statement is printed added item chocolate with price 2.0 quantity 10 so this is how you can replace variables using format method and for format you can also have names inside the placeholders so we could do this price and then here quantity and then you the order doesn't matter if you don't give the names to the placeholders the order inside the format method arguments uh, matter like the first one will go uh, to the first placeholder second one will go to the second one but if you give them names then you can uh, give it in any order you just have to say for name equals to this price equals to uh, this and then quantity equals to whatever so now if arguments in this formats are would not even if they are not in proper order so i'll just move price to the end and paste it uh, let me delete this and then we'll just format it little bit so that it's easier to read uh let's put this format part below okay and if we now 
print this. I will just create something. I will create T price 10 quantity 20. And you see that still working. Added item T with price 10. It is taking the price properly even if the order is not correct. Because then if you put names into the placeholders, the names will be used while replacing them. So price will be replaced with price and then it is 10. So it will show as 10 and quantity 20. The another way to do string formatting in Python is to use F strings. So we'll just uh, comment this part out. Okay. And this will not actually run then because it's a comment now and say, we'll say print. And to use F strings, you have to prepend your double quoted string with the F. So you just have to say F space uh, f and then double quotes and inside these double quotes you can write normally like added item and now you just have to uh, use curly braces and then inside these curly braces you have to provide the name of the variable that you want to replace uh, this part with so we have name defined in line here right we have defined name here and so this name will be used here and I'll just make this screen big. Okay. Added item name with price colon. And then uh, we'll say quantity equals to colon quantity. So if we run this now, again, we'll do the same thing. We'll create an item T, then price uh, 2, quantity 10. So you see it's saying added item t with price to quantity 10. So this is a simpler way of uh, doing string interpolation. If you have already declared uh, the variables that you are going to use in the string. So f string will be useful there. Format is used in another context. Like if you have not defined the variable first, you have the formatted string first and then you will calculate the variables and then it will be replaced. So you can use the format in that in that case. So for now, we'll keep this f string part here. Now we will start formatting or printing our bill in a proper format and let's create a function to do that a method and we'll use def space we'll call it as format and it will not take any arguments other than itself so itself let's first look at what how it will be actually printed so if you remember uh, our demo of the application we were printing the bill in this format nicely at the end so it's printing the bill the bill colon the customer id then there is a row with the header that is the item the quantity the price then there is a divider kind of it's just printing the hyphen character and then we are printing the items with the quantity and the price for simplicity we are just printing the total price and the quantity and then finally the tax and total so you can see that like these are evenly spaced even if chocolate word has more number of characters than tea or coffee still all of them are this column size is equal that is it's taking a fixed amount of space the column size is of fixed size and then we are putting the characters inside them similarly the quantity is also taking a fixed amount of space uh, that is this much and then again there is a colon which is fixed even if the quantity is like two characters three characters doesn't matter and then again the price so to do that, we will be using F strings and then we will show how you can use it. So let's first create a variable which will be called as display bill equals to and we want to print the first line, right? Bill colon. So we'll do bill colon and I'll create an F string by the way. So it's an F string and what do we want? We want the customer ID. So we'll say We'll, we'll create a placeholder self dot customer ID. As you see, we have self as the first argument, right? So format has access to the instance variable. That's why we can use self and then the instance variable. So we want to use customer ID and let's just print it at the end just to remove the error. So this will print the bill and we have, we have created the first line simple, right? And now we want the next line to be in the next, like it's the next line. So we want to print the columns. So we'll put a new line backslash n. So this will add a back backslash n means new line. So 
whatever you write after that so for example if we write item that's it and we'll save just to test it out and we'll close the previously run one okay python main.py and let's put the customer id is same as a1 and we'll add an item uh let's say t price 10 whatever it doesn't matter and then we actually we have not called the format method so we need to call it somewhere right so just uh, while saving we'll remove all these lines that we previously printed and we'll just call a uh, bill dot format that's it we don't need to print this because inside the format method we are printing the display bill so we just have to call the function and that will already print it we'll save and then rerun we'll quickly add something and we'll save the bill so now if you see we have bill colon a1 and then item in the new line we will add the names of the columns and we added item so you see the format it's like this item and then there are some spaces after that and this is the column width so we want the column width for item to be uh, 20 characters same like for quantity we want it to be 12 and for price we want it to be uh, again 12 so to do that using the f string method you need to again put the placeholder syntax or the expression like this is the way to add an expression inside f strings we'll just use the string item so it's not necessary to use a variable inside it we can use a literal and in this case uh, this item is like it's not defined but it's saying that item is not defined and it's inside this this error was due to the double quotes that we are using for the f string so everything inside the double quotes is the uh, single string for python right now and if we had double quotes inside here like if we replace this this by double quotes python thinks that this part is a single string and this ends here and then you have something wrong at the end this part is wrong right because it's not uh, there is no starting point for that string and ending point so to fix that we can use single quotes inside the double quotes and this will not break our string because it's not ending here it's ending it it's in its proper uh, place we have everything inside the double quotes and we can print the string also so item is a raw string now like we are just printing the string we do, we are not using any item variable it's the actual string that will be printed just we are using the expression syntax because we want to define the column width and using f strings to define column width you have to you have to use the curly braces and then inside that uh, you can use a variable or a, a raw value and then you put a colon and then you you can give the column size or the column width it will be in character so i'll say 20 characters uh, this will be this item column will take 20 characters then the next one again we'll use the curly braces and the next one we had was price single quotes price so this will again print price but the column width will be 12 actually it was not price it was quantity so let's do quantity 12 so this this quantity column will take 12 characters width for the column and then the last one was price and let's do again 12 for this one so we added price with the column width of 12 um, let's uh, let's print this first so if we run it create the screen run this put something random we'll just save the bill directly because we don't want, we just want to see the format of the bill and you see it's printing the bill a1 item column quantity price um just if we go back to our demo uh, like the real one you see the price is right aligned that is it is taking 12 width for the column uh, column but it is right aligned the price itself is right aligned right so to do that uh, all you have to do is put a greater than arrow after the colon so this says that everything inside these curly braces will be right aligned so price will be right aligned in this case and it will take a column width it will take 12 character spaces and price will be right aligned it price will start from the right side so if we save this and rerun 
but something will save the build directly and you see price is now quite aligned okay and now if we go back to our example we have a divider after the column uh, the column names so we have this divider which is created using hyphens so uh, we'll create that one now you can redefine the display bill with uh, like using it itself again so we'll do div display bill equals to and we'll use f string again and here we can use the display bill first so that we don't lose what we have added here so display bill will be equal to display bill itself and uh, in a new line backslash n so this means this will add a new line and then below that we want to print uh, hyphens we could write it like we could add it 44 times like this way because why 44 because we want to have uh, the we want to have the divider exactly of the size of the column names we want to have it exactly of that length so if we calculate this it's 20 plus 12 plus 12 so it's 44 so we could manually write this 44 times or uh, we could use an expression again curly braces and we'll use the sorry we'll use single quotes again when we don't want to mess the uh, escaping part and then we'll use hyphen into 44 times so in python if you multiply a non-numeric uh, a string basically to a number it will display the string that many times so it will print that string that many times so in this case we want to display hyphen 44 times so let's test if it's working we'll save it and then we'll rerun our application just put something we'll save the build directly and you see it's printing the uh, the hyphens properly below this column with exactly 44 length now we want to print our items so if we go back to our demo and if you see that we are printing the items after the divider so the items are also printed in the same way like we printed the column headers so it the item is taking around 20 characters quantity is taking the same as the quantity header price again same just that we have additional x and a colon here so we need to uh, incorporate it into our calculation so let's go back and just one thing you should note that we are printing the items but we don't know the number of items that will be present in the items list so we need to loop through the items and add a row for each item that we have so let's go back and we will for looping through the list we will use the for loop from python so it's very simple you just say for uh, you can name anything so you will get an item from the list each time you go through it so basically item for item in self dot items so we are looping through the instance items list and it will go through each item and each item we will get in the code block below so now we can use that item so let's just print it print item and if we save this and let's go back clear the screen and rerun it so um, we'll add some random let's say chocolate and some price and if you just save the bill now you see it's printed here so uh, i'll just add two items just to make it easier to understand let's create t11 coffee uh sorry c coffee two two and if we save the bill now you see it's printing the item in the loop itself so what we want to do is print the contents of the item in a proper format below this divider line and to do that we will again use the same kind of f string so let's do it here itself i'll we are not directly going to print it right we are adding we are creating our string in the string uh, variable called as display bill so we need to append the lines to our display bill uh, variable that we have so we'll say display bill equals to f string and let's create the f string we'll again use display bill that we get before because we want it and then we will add a new line and 
let's now add the contents so it will be self no not self because we get the item in the loop so we now we will write it once for each row so this line will be executed multiple times like based on the number of items that we have in the self dot items variable it will be executed executed that many times so we need to just uh, do it once so we'll take the item name sorry not double quotes use in single quotes to access the uh, elements of the dictionary because we are using double quotes for the string itself so that it doesn't clash with it and now we'll print the item name then uh, let's give it 20 column width same for uh, item quantity and this time we'll give it as uh, we need a x right like if we go back to our demo we have an x here but it's not part of the quantity variable it's just that we are writing the x manually so let's just put x between the item name and the item quantity uh, expression and since we are using x and then a space so we are using two characters out of the 12 that quantity column has so we need to put re give the remaining width to it so 10 uh, you will understand what i mean by this so if we go back here this thing this column is taking 12 character spaces if you see it here and since we are adding the x and space before the number or the quantity actual value that we are printing we are adding x and space so it's taking two characters already so remaining 10 we are we are giving the giving it to the quantity uh, of that item so that's what we are doing here and then uh, if you go back we have a colon in the price column just before that so let's just put colon and then again in curly braces we'll add our item square bracket price and let's give it the remaining spaces which is 11 okay y11 again if you go back here its total space is 12 and one character space is taken by colon itself so remaining 11 we are giving it to price and let's uh, save this and if we have print statements somewhere else we'll just remove them so that doesn't confuse us we'll remove this bill items from here okay let's rerun our code customer id a1 we'll add an item t price one a quantity 10 and then let's add one more coffee price two quantity seven and now if we save the bill you see it's printing the item quantity and then the items itself but quantities are being printed on the right side we need to left align it so if you want to like by default it's left aligned but for this case it's being right aligned but we can force it to be left aligned and if we just put less than uh, arrow then it will be left aligned and we want the price to be right aligned so let's just keep it explicit and save it and now if we rerun a1 i'll just add something sorry copy price four three some saveable and now if you see the quantity is being left aligned we have an x and then space and then the quantity it was two for both the cases coffee and tea and then the price is right aligned now the price we want to display in a proper format that is not just having a single digit after the decimal point we want to display uh, two digits after the decimal point uh, like we have in our demo and uh, that we can do easily using python's uh, number formatting in a string so if we go to the end of our string here and we have 11 character width after the colon you can specify the left aligned or right aligned based on the uh, greater than or less than arrow then the number that you give is used to specify the width of the string that it should take and then if you put a period and the number 2f so this means that after the decimal take uh, like put two digits after the decimal when you are formatting a number uh, to a float 
and let's just save this and rerun rerun this a1 we'll add some item price uh, two quantity two create an item coffee price three quantity five and then let's save the bill and you see it's properly formatted now okay the price that we are printing is actually the price of the single item so so we added the price for coffee as three and it's just showing the total price as three uh, that's because we were we are using the wrong key inside uh, from the dictionary item we should use the total underscore price key as we are adding it in the add item this one uh, this one sorry okay so if we now save and rerun clear the screen rerun it a1 will do a t price will be two quantity three again coffee press three quantity four now let's save the bill now it's correct uh the t quantity is three and the price was two so the total is six and same for coffee total is 12. this part the 11.2f uh, don't get confused uh, with like it's not 11 characters before the period and then two characters after the period uh, like that the 11 before the period or the 11 after the colon that you mentioned is the total width that this item will take and this after the point the 2f is the formatting for the number that you have in in the item total price so this whole spe this whole width is of 11 characters and then inside that the number the digit will be formatted such that it will have two digits after the decimal point now uh, we have the items printed and let's see what we want to print next we should we need a divider same as here and then we want to print the tax and the total amount so that should be simple we just copy this line and put it after the for loop because this is the divider that we had and the next step is to add the tax so we need to get the tax first so let's create a variable called as tax equals to self dot calculate tax you remember we created this function which is just taking the total amount and then uh, taking the tax percent that we have and then calculating the tax and if we go back now we have the tax amount with us and let's create a new variable called as total amount is equals to self dot total we are creating this instance variable total which is then used in add item to get the total value of the items that we have added but this is not the final total price that we will use uh, because we have the tax to add as well so let's add the tax here plus tax and now we have the total amount with us so the only thing remaining is to print these two lines here and it should be simple we just reuse the display bill variable again and create an f string and let's keep the display bill like we do always and create a new line and now we want to add the line for the tax uh, variable so we will again create an expression uh, curly braces one and then let's uh, write a raw string tax here and it should take the column width should be of 32 why 32 because if you go back here the tax is taking the column width which is equal to the total column width of item and quantity so that's why item was 20 and quantity was 12 right so tax should be 32 same for total it should be 32 so let's go back and we will continue adding the tax variable now so do we have a colon yes we have a colon here and then uh, let's add the price or the tax amount so it will be tax the variable that we have created here okay and then it will take the, the formatting will format it as well it will be right aligned and then it will take 11 characters column width and then it should be formatted same as the price like it should have two digits after the decimal let's uh, just duplicate this line and do the same thing for total so it will be total and 32 and then the variable will be total amount 
let's try this out and see whether it works we'll add some items the price 20 quantity 2 one more coffee 9 price select quantity 10 then save the bill and you see it's printing the tax with the total column width as item and quantity is column width and then the total amount as well that's it for this video and in the next video we will learn about error handling in python and we will also save our bill to a file and we'll learn about how you can write and read files in python thank you